Uh, hi, I'm Frank Runyon, and I'm at Nativity Parish in Sioux City, Iowa. People often ask what inspired me to begin doing these performances in churches, and there are many things that combine. Sometimes it's life events, and there were certainly those. Uh, we had some twins that miscarried, and, and one of my best friends uh, jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. So. And that really asked some hard questions. And at that time, my kids were also getting a little older, and they really needed some help understanding what the story of faith was all about. So I started to learn more so I could tell the story to my kids. And then, and then we were having fun doing that. And so then my pastor said, well, would you tell some stories in church? And that's how it started. What's the matter? I don't actually pick stories out of scripture. I pick texts because uh, I work from the original text of the Greek and um, try and just present that story the way the original evangelist intended it to be told. I mean, the parables of Jesus I'll tell from beginning to end, but I also tell it from the beginning to the end of Luke. So it's shaped the way Luke shaped it. And when I do the Sermon on the Mount, that was meant to be heard as a speech all by itself. And so I really uh, think of myself more as a musician that approaches a score that has a, a shape of its own and try and play it so other people can hear the melodies and the music that's in it that, that we too often miss when we just read it on a page. It's wonderful when it makes a big difference in somebody's faith life that they, that they hear something. Every once in a while somebody will say, I've been waiting 40 years to get what I just got. And, uh, and that usually is just that they realize that, that God is actually present and talking to them about their own life. But there's also a great joy that just comes from speaking scripture and discovering all of the depth that is there. There, there is always more to be discovered. In the city, anymore, this is too much attention. I remember when I was working on the parables of Jesus and I suddenly was out walking in a national park and I realized that what I was looking at in nature was constructed very much the way Jesus constructed his parables. And I was going, like, oh my gosh, of course, because it's the same, <laughs> the same artist just crafting in a different way. I mean, it, 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 there's, there's so much beauty, but you, you can't see all of it or understand all of it, but you just, there's so much depth. And it's just, I was just like, oh my gosh. It, people often think of when it's a one-man show that there's only one actor. But of course, it's always two. The audience is the other half. And so depending upon wh who you see out there, you adjust the way you speak. When you're talking with a young group of kids, you have to meet them with their energy and, um, and that kind of very physical playfulness. But I never decide to mute the scripture. So it's really trying to communicate what the text is is trying to do. In the Sermon on the Mount, uh, in order to, to play it correctly, there has to be a certain amount of um, seriousness and uh, reflectiveness in, in what you're saying. But I'd like to think that the text tells me how it wants to be spoken. <laughs>